I want to tell you a story. Once there was a breathtakingly beautiful planet with swirling patterns of blue and green and white moving through vast, dark space, a perfect distance from its warming sun to develop an explosion of millions of forms of wild, improbable, interconnected, and unimaginably beautiful life. Late in the pulse of declining and emerging species, a newcomer arrived, neither particularly fast nor fierce, but with an unusually large and complex brain, and began to separate itself from the others. Like all life forms, early humans began to mobilize resources to support their needs. Our ingenuity in doing this exceeded any species the planet had ever known. Mastering tools, harnessing fire, developing agriculture and domesticating animals, we began to appropriate the rest of nature to meet our needs. Somewhere along the way, we began to tell ourselves a story of human exceptionalism, that we are separate from nature and that the rest of the natural world is ours for the taking. Individuals and entire cultures with stories and ways of life that emphasized living in harmony with nature and protecting the web of life tended to be marginalized or destroyed. Late in the story, we discovered the nearly boundless energy stored in the fossil remains of previous life forms. Burning these fuels exponentially increased our ability to transform landscapes, develop new products and technologies, mine minerals from deep in the ground and sea, fell forests, expand agriculture and food production, transport people and products, and extend fishing to the remotest reaches of the ocean. In the space of less than a century, we became the dominant force shaping Earth's biophysical conditions. Our inventions and discoveries allowed most of humanity to experience breathtaking improvements in education, wealth, and health. Global adult literacy doubled from 1940 to 2015. The percentage of people living in extreme poverty fell from 62% to 10%, despite a nearly threefold increase in the global human population during that time. Average global life expectancy rose from 46 years to 72 years. But the same extraordinary technological and scientific developments that fueled these unimaginable improvements in human development over the course of a single lifetime also accelerated the erosion of our planet's natural systems. In removing ourselves from nature, we've allowed our collective activities to become extreme. To feed ourselves each year, we claim 40% of the world's land surface for crop plants and pastures. We appropriate half the accessible fresh water, mostly to irrigate our crops. We've dammed over 60% of the world's rivers and cut down half the temperate and tropical forests. The pollution from our enterprises contaminates air, water, and soil at a global scale and is driving accelerating climate change. Of the total mass of mammals on Earth today, 36% is human beings, 60% is domesticated livestock, 4% is wild mammals. Two-thirds of the birds, reptiles, amphibians, fishes, and mammals that used to share the planet with us are gone. A million species face extinction, many within decades. In pursuit of our ambitions, all of nature has become collateral damage. But human beings are not disconnected from the rest of the natural world. Planetary health is a rapidly growing transdisciplinary field focused on understanding and addressing the human health impacts of our degradation of natural systems. Planetary health research is teaching us that our dismantling of nature has become an urgent threat to human health and well-being. A rapidly changing climate, loss of biodiversity, pollution of air, water, and soil, deforestation and other land use changes, and scarcity of fresh water and arable land are interacting to affect the foundations of human well-being the quality and quantity of food we can produce, the quality of air we breathe and water we drink, 
our exposure to infectious diseases and extreme weather events, even the habitability of the places many of us live. Every dimension of human health is being affected, from nutrition to infectious disease exposure, from non-communicable diseases to mental health. The enormous health gains we've achieved over the last several decades are now threatened by our own transformation of nature's systems. Nor are the health burdens distributed evenly or fairly. When warming causes malaria to move up into the East African highlands, the poorest families who cannot purchase bed nets are most vulnerable. When pollinating insects decline and crop yields fall, the wealthy can afford to purchase fresh fruit and vegetables while the poor suffer higher rates of heart disease, stroke, and certain cancers because of decreased consumption of these foods. When extreme weather and crop failures drive people from their homes, the wealthy are insulated while the poor suffer. Consumption patterns and value systems of the wealthiest people on earth are putting the poorest people and future generations in harm's way. Awareness around planetary health is moving quickly across the world. From policymakers to the private sector to the general public, we're waking up to what Martin Luther King once described as the fierce urgency of now. To safeguard human health and well-being and to protect the rest of life on Earth will require deep, urgent, structural change in how we live and a global commitment to reversing our degradation of Earth's natural systems. Our growing awakening to this fact holds enormous promise. Looking out across the domains of global food systems, energy systems, manufacturing and the circular economy, urban design and green chemistry, we see a rich landscape of solutions. We can imagine a world a hundred years from now where the human population has stabilized as a result of educating girls, creating economic opportunities for women and providing access to contraception for couples who want it. A world in which we have extended today's remarkable gains in renewable energy technology and moved to a post-combustion energy system. A world where we are producing food and manufactured goods with dramatically reduced ecological inputs. And a world where most of us are living in cities that have been designed to optimize physical, mental, and cultural health while allowing nature to regenerate. The moment we face calls for more than rapid innovation in our technologies and practices. Underneath the ecological crisis we have created and the global health crisis that it is precipitating is a spiritual crisis. We've allowed our myth of human exceptionalism to create a rupture between humanity and the natural world we depend on. The reverence and awe that most of us feel toward nature has lost its authority in guiding our decisions. We will need to weave a new fabric with threads from indigenous knowledge, the world's faith traditions, literature, and the arts that reasserts our spiritual connection to the natural world. Our story of human exceptionalism, of extraction, domination, scarcity, and ultimately extinction will need to give way to new stories and values of interdependence, equity, abundance, regeneration, and renaissance. We find ourselves actors in one of history's greatest dramas. A lone species with an outsized talent for bending the natural world toward our will, spinning through space on a stunning but fragile planet. The same complex brain that has subjugated much of nature is bringing us news that the state of natural systems and the well-being of humanity cannot remain disconnected. We know that people around the world are suffering across every region and every dimension of health. We have the science, stories, and solutions in front of us. We know what to do. Will we do it?